today's video I'm going to show you an extreme 3D Medusa which has all of these curly swirly snakes that are completely surrounding the nail so you don't actually see any of the edges of the nail. But this design is just so cool and so impressive and all of the little snakes have a whole bunch of different scales on them and they're all made with what either is called plastilin gel or lace paste or 4D gel. There's a bunch of names for the same basic product. And so they're very easy to make. It's just like using Play-Doh, which is something that this one loves to do. Do you like making snakes out of Play-Doh? Yeah. So I hope you guys like it and don't forget to check out Helen's design too. We're collaborating eggs. on the 30... Oh, you like to make eggs out of Play-Doh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. I'm going to begin with an overlay of clear acrylic. So I ended up painting this nail black and I really don't prefer to sculpt a full overlay with black acrylic. So I sculpt a clear overlay and then file it and then paint it with black gel polish instead. I think that just gives a richer black appearance and a smoother black appearance than sculpting a black overlay. But that's personal preference so you can do it either way. And then I'm going to, like I said, paint that with a layer of black gel polish, one or two coats, cure it, apply a layer of gel sealer, and then I'm going to very gently scratch the surface or buff the surface or etch the surface with a file. That just gives something for that acrylic to grab, and I don't typically do that because I don't want those scratches to show with the final 3D design, but this time I know this nail is going to be almost completely covered where you can't see any of it, so if a little bit of it gets etched, that only helps the design stick. So with a nude color, a really nice tan that's opaque, that's one thing to consider with this. You don't want to use a cover pink that is semi-transparent because that won't show up very well against the black. So you want to make sure you have a very opaque sculpting color for this. You're going to sculpt her face. So for my Medusa, because there's so many different depictions, uh, some have green skin, some have tan skin, I couldn't decide. So I decided to go with both. So I have her face for the most part being a flesh tone and then having just a little bit of a green scaly pattern coming down from her forehead. Like it blends into her skin like she's you know, partially morphing into snake, but isn't there. The other thing with her is, so, you know, some are very human looking, some are very snake looking. I also couldn't really decide. So I went halfway in between and did a little bit of a smoothness down from the forehead, which lends itself towards a reptilian look, but then more human features that are just slightly more angular. So, you know, it's really kind of what you want to do. And there's so many wonderful reference photos available online for somebody like Medusa that you can just go through and see what you like and see what you don't like and make your own personal decisions because you know you may really want to go full reptilian which is really cool and there's no problem with it or you may be like you know what I want her to look like a person just with snake hair and you can do that too no problems either way so I would recommend just doing a little bit of research type in Medusa into Google and you'll find a whole bunch of stuff. If you don't see anything you like there, you can try different search combinations like Medusa art or Medusa painting. I One thing I really like to do, and I don't think I've ever mentioned this before, when I'm looking for reference photos and I'm not really seeing anything I like with the obvious search terms, I like to look at tattoos, especially if it's something like this that there is most likely a bunch of tattoos of. So I'll type in Medusa tattoo and that can get you some really, really cool imagery because if somebody's got, you know, there's some amazing tattoo artists out there and they put a lot of effort into some of their designs and make sure that they're very, you know, well balanced and just beautiful and something that somebody has on their arm all the time or back or, you know, their body, they have this image on their body it's got a, you know, it's hopefully a pretty good one. So you may want to borrow concepts from tattoo artists too. So that's a little thing that I don't think I've ever mentioned before. So then I'm going to take some shimmery green, like I said, and just brush that down her forehead. And then using the pokey side of a floss pick, which is one of my favorite carving tools, I'm going to just very quickly carve in some scale patterns on her forehead. So while that green acrylic is still wet, you can just kind of draw in it essentially. And then with a berry type of a red color, I'm going to be sculpting her lips. I do want her to have a very beautiful feminine air about her. So that really bright cherry red color for her lips definitely gives that sense of femininity. 
and then I'm going to take more of my tan color and I'm going to be sculpting her neck going down. This is another situation where it's pretty much going to be covered up by her hair. So it doesn't have to be overly detailed or anything. This is just a background essentially. So color or sculpt that all the way down until you get to the tip of the nail. This, I guess that would depend on how long your nail is. So if your nail is about this length, then there you go. So now we're going to take and roll long snakes of plastilin gel or lace paste or 40 art gel. There's a bunch of different names for what is essentially the same product in black. So I've got, so think of your Play-Doh days. And I do a lot of Play-Doh now with my daughter, but you're going to roll just a really long, thin piece, rope of this gel make sure you're wearing gloves um, to carve the actual little snake faces like you saw i just took a manicure scissors and snipped the thick end of your little rope or snake and that will split it open into the mouth and then using a, a cone shaped silicone tool you can make some adjusting adjustments to the shape of the snake's mouth and face and add a couple more details so keep adding and filling in her hair with all of these little coils of snake and so you can switch it up. You can do one snake face if you want. You can have a face on the end of all of them if you'd like. You can, I mean, it's really up to you. This is another thing where, you know, look at your reference images, see what you like, see what you don't like, and it'll give you some ideas. I saw a couple images where she just had white eyes with no iris, no pupil or anything, and I thought that looked so cool. So I went that route, and then I showed it to my husband. He goes, why didn't you give her any details in her eyes? So clearly he would have put an iris and a pupil in. And so like, you know, personal preference. So keep adding all of those details to her and all of those snakes making these little snakes is actually a lot of fun i thoroughly enjoyed it because working with this lace paste which is what i'm using because i'm using the wildflowers lace paste if you want to know exactly what it is that i'm using um and that it just is so easy to work with it is really like using play-doh and then as soon as you're happy with the shape you stick it in a lamp for 10 30 minute whatever 10 30 seconds if you want to flash cure it or a minute if you want to do a hard cure and then they're set up and you can move on to the next one it is fast easy and like a flashback to play-doh time so now i'm going to take and do all of the details on my medusa and her snakes with acrylic paint at least at this particular point i'm going to start with acrylic paint so with a shade of brown i'm going to be adding some shading on her face depending on how much sculpting you did it can really guide your shading and make it very easy if you're somebody who is into cosmetics like, you know, makeup and you have ever done any contouring, you can use that knowledge as to where you apply your contour as to how to do her face. So you contour, you know, cheekbones, jawline, etc., and it just makes contouring and shading a piece of art that much easier. And so then you can go through and you can add eyelashes and you can, you know, keep her very, very girly and add lots of eyelashes or just a little bit less and you know just do a couple eyelashes like I did there's really endless possibilities with a character like Medusa the that's one of the things that I love about painting or sculpting anything that's mythological is because there's just there's no right and wrong and it's what you like it's what you want to do and you can just have a lot of fun with it so I'm going to be giving her some eyebrows and that's another thing that I couldn't decide if I wanted to give her eyebrows or not but I thought it really framed her scales to skin very nicely add a little bit of detail to her lips you know just a little bit same thing you know if you are somebody that does makeup and you ever have done lip ombres and lip contouring apply that knowledge here anytime you can take knowledge from one art form and apply it to another is a win-win so then i'm going to do a little bit of outlining on her scales just do a little bit here and there i put some gold some metallic gold paint on her face just here and there just to kind of give her a shimmer plus then we're going to take that same metallic gold and we're going to carry that into the snakes so we're going to paint the snakes bellies all with that metallic gold paint and so that gets tricky because your snakes are all coiled up around themselves and so to get to their bellies and to decide where their bellies are on each one isn't necessarily cut and dry and so while you're doing this just kind of take your time go slow figure out where each one is and use a very small paintbrush so it can get into little tiny nooks and crannies and if you use a bigger brush you might just find that you're getting paint everywhere where it doesn't belong so very cautiously paint all of these little snake bellies 
And so as you can see, I'm kind of starting at the bottom and working my way up. Have a process that you're following because it would be really easy to miss a couple spots or a couple snakes with this particular process just because there are so many that you're working on. If you wanted to, if you didn't want to try to do them all at once, instead of going where you did all of the snakes with the lace paste and now you're doing all of their bellies, you could have put in a couple snakes, done their bellies, cured that, finished that off, come back and done a couple more snakes, you know, rolled them out and then finished them off and do them in a process like that. It would be more time consuming in general, doing everything of one product line and, you know, step at a time is definitely, um, just a little bit more paste. But if you are worried about getting all of their bellies painted and easily getting their bellies painted, that would be another option. So just keep going through and painting all of their little bellies with that gold paint. The paint I'm using is, um, it's a Ceram Coat bottle of soft gold that I have had for years. And I don't even know if it's still made anymore because I've had it for so long. It's, it was my mother's bottle of paint and I stole it from her because it is so nice and so lovely and metallic. So I don't know, I ever get questions. Every time I use this paint, I get questions about what it is. And I can put exactly what it is in the description box. I'll look it up but I'm not sure if it's even something that's still in production. So after I have all of their bellies done, then I'm going to go and I'm going to do all of their mouths with a light pink. So I wanted their mouths to be super obvious and super visual and something that you just see because it's otherwise just this mass of black and gold. If you don't want their mouths to be light pink because that does give them a less vicious look, then red would be the other option to match Medusa's mouth. That would be the other choice that I would recommend, but I liked the light pink because it did just make them look, you could see where all their mouths were really quick and really easy and without any question. So then after you have that, we're going to take white and give them white eyes. If your Medusa, if her face doesn't have just the, you know, big white eyes like mine does, if you decided to give her pupils and an iris, then you may want to do that for the snake as well. But then I'm going to take and I'm going to apply some matte top coat over all of the snakes and over Medusa's face. And then very selectively take little dots of no wipe top coat and dot that all over the top of the snakes. So do this in just a process. I would flash cure this periodically because that no wipe top coat may run a little bit. And instead of having a whole bunch of nice little dots, you'll end up with one big blob and you don't want that. You want little dots of the top coat. So just again, tiny, tiny brush and just dab, 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 dab. It's easier to find the tops of the snakes versus finding their bellies because when you're doing their bellies, there's no point of reference. You've just got all of these black swirls, but now you do have a frame of reference because you have where their faces are and you have where their bellies are. And so you just have to do everything that isn't a belly is the basic idea here and just go through with that little bit of no wipe tap coat. Make sure it's one, a no wipe tap coat that cures very nicely and picks up chrome powder really nicely because some of them don't some of them take you know a full minute to cure and they have to really get some direct light and some of them can you know cure quickly and easily and around the curves i'm using madam glam's top coat that's when i have found works really well for chrome and it also cures in 30 seconds versus a minute so that just makes it easier and now using a silicone tool i'm going to be applying a green gold duochrome powder and instead of using a, um, so do a chrome powder, usually you see little sponge applicators or silicone tools. Don't use the sponge applicator for this because it is not as precise and you may end up with that chrome powder everywhere you don't want it. And while it won't stick permanently, it'll still look glittery and foggy right now. And you just want to be a bit more precise. So a flat edged silicone tool is the really the best option here for this particular situation. So just dip a little bit of that chrome powder onto the silicone tool and then apply that to each snake over that um, no wipe top coat. Doesn't take too much. That powder goes a long ways. And as you can see, these snakes look so reptilian and so shiny and slimy and beautiful. And then I'm going to take some glossy gel sealer. I'm going to apply it over Medusa's eyes, lips, and then brush a little bit over the tops of the snakes. So I'll brush this really as thin as you possibly can because you don't want to fill in any of the 3D elements of your snakes and kind of, you know, gloss over them and make them look a little bit less defined, but you do need to seal in the duochrome powder. So it's a balance. 
So just brush that nice and thin and then that is it. This nail is awesome. This is one of my favorite nails I have ever made. I am so proud of it. I hope you guys love it as much as I do and please share any recreations with me on Facebook or Instagram. I would just love to see them. The snake is just, ah, oh, I love it. And also please don't forget to subscribe to see all my future Halloween videos as well.